So here we have four similarly looking molecules that are all protonated and they're all acidic. And our task here is to rank these molecules based on their acidity from the weakest to the strongest. But before we jump into conclusion here, it's always a good idea to remind ourselves what type of factors we're going to be looking at when we are deciding acidity of our molecules. And those are going to be stability factors of the charged species. So we're going to be looking at the resonance, at the atomic size of atoms with the charge, at the electronegativity of atoms with the charge, we're also going to look at induction where it is applicable, and we finally can look at the hybridization if applicable as well. And as I've mentioned before, these factors are only going to be relevant to the charge species. So when it comes to the acid-base equilibrium, there are going to be two possible scenarios that we can analyze. In the first scenario, we have our acid that is going to be a neutral species, and it's going to be making the conjugate conjugate base over here and the conjugate base is going to be charged. In this case, we are going to be looking at the stability of the conjugate base. We can also have a different scenario in which our acid is charged and our conjugate base is going to be uncharged. Well, in this case, we are going to be looking at the stability of the acid itself. And, what's more important, we are going to be analyzing how unstable the acid is. If in the first case we are looking at the stability of the conjugate base and the more stable the conjugate base is, the more acidic the acid that it produced, in this case we are going to be looking at how unstable the acid is and the more unstable that acid is, the more acidic it is going to be because it's going to be more likely to get rid of the proton to stabilize itself and become a neutral species. And that's exactly the situation that I have in this question, so I'm going to be analyzing acids themselves, and whichever acid is going to be the least stable one, that one is going to be the most acidic, and whichever is going to be the most stable, well, that one is going to be the least acidic one. And going down my laundry list of my factors, I'm going to start by looking at the resonance structures, or possible resonance structure for my molecules here. The first one can give us two other resonance structures, so the overall count of my resonance structures I have three major contributors. Of course, I can also have some minor contributors here, but if we have major contributors with full octets around the atoms with the charge, we are not really going to be considering the minor contributors at that point. Likewise, I can draw one more structure for the uh, molecule B. For that one, it's also going to be the second major contributor because we have a full octet, and again, I am not going to be looking at the minor contributors. Likewise, for C, I'm going to have one more resonance structure, and for my molecule D, I am not going to have any reasonable resonance structures, any other major contributors, any other uh, major contributors with full octets. The only other contributor that we could possibly draw here is going to be an open shell um, contributor with a plus on the carbon, so we're not going to be considering that one. And at this point, we can see right away that we have a drastic difference in stability of our our species. The molecule A has the largest number of resonance contributors with full octets, so that one is going to be the most stable species. And since this is the most stable species, it is going to be the least acidic species in this case. And we can also see that the molecule D over here, well, that guy has no resonance stabilization whatsoever, which means that that one is going to be the least stable species, and because of that, it is going to be the most acidic species. So if I want to to draw my ranking here, I would say that we are going to start with the molecule A that is going to be the weakest acid out of all of them, and we are going to finish with molecule D, which is going to be the most acidic out of all of our molecules. Now, I have B and I have C, each of which only has one additional resonance structure. But there is a good difference between our resonance structure. The thing is, in the first case, in the case of molecule B, my charge is located on nitrogen in one structure and it is also on the nitrogen in the second structure. While in the case of C, I have positive charge on the nitrogen and then I have positive charge on the oxygen 
oxygen. Well, in this case, since we do not have any differences in our resonance, we are going to start looking at the position of our charge and what type of differences we have there. When it comes to our charges, we have charge on the nitrogen versus we have charge on the oxygen. Size-wise, these guys are the same because they are both uh, located in the second period of the periodic table, so the size differences between them is going to be insignificant. However, the next factor in our all laundry list is going to be electronegativity. And when it comes to electronegativity, oxygen's electronegativity is somewhere around 3.5, while the nitrogen's electronegativity is around 3.0, which means that oxygen has a significantly higher electronegativity and, because of that, it is going to be less stable with the positive charge. So that means that the overall hybrid that we have for the molecule C is going to be less stable because oxygen is less stable with the positive charge than nitrogen. So since C is going to be less stable, it means that it's going to be more acidic so we are going to say that C is right over here and we have our molecule B sitting right over here, right after A. So in this case, it coincidentally so happened that our ranking actually follows the same order how our molecules are shown on the screen, so that's kind of fun. Anyways, that's all I have for you for today. Thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, hit the like button to help promote this video and help more students see it. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Leave me your questions and feedback in the comments below. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.